welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is Earth Vlog number 70. Hello! <laughs> it has been a little over a month since I've been here. Um, it has been such a busy time, but I am here now and I have so much to share with you. So let's just jump right in. <laughs> So this episode is a special one and completely dedicated to the festivals, to Woolen Folk and to Rhinebeck, which all happened last week. Actually, a week ago today, I was up in Rhinebeck, New York <laughs> uh, at the festival having such an amazing time. Um, really quick, where have I been for the last month and a half? Almost two months, holy cow. Uh, just... There's something about this school year that just took over. Don't know what it is, can't really explain it, but I have been eyeball deep in kids stuff and doing stuff and family stuff, but I am here now. So um, you don't wanna hear about all that boring mommy stuff. So let's jump right into it. Where do I begin? Um, there's so much to share, so much to talk about. Um, oh my gosh. So. In the last month, the biggest thing to happen over the last month, um, family and school stuff aside, has been the sale of my yarn, which is right over there. <laughs> uh, and it, falling in love, the colorway, my last episode I talked about that and the release and everything, and the response just... If you've been watching for a while, you know I'm a crier, guys. It's going to be a lot of that today, <laughs> so get ready. Um, the response just was beyond what I could have hoped for. Really, really beyond. Um, the yarn went on sale. Oh my gosh, what day? Um, I think September 10th, maybe? Um, and sold out in, in really quick. <laughs> really, really sold out fast. Um, dare I say minutes, but uh, probably more like an hour. <laughs> it had all sold out. I was so proud. I was just bursting. I spent that whole weekend packing and packing orders and writing thank you notes and I kept call, like messaging Michelle like oh my god I can't believe that this is happening and it's just it was just mind-blowing for both of us we've just we're so proud of this collection of this collaboration so that was the big thing in September um and then it was full steam ahead prepping for the fiber festivals it is it is fall oh and then we also had the falling leaf sock cal i'll talk about that maybe a little bit just for two seconds at the end and there's just been there was so much prepping for the fiber events and people wanted me to restock the shop but i knew that michelle was getting ready for all of the events she was going to be at woolen folk on Friday, October 14th. That was the big, big, big day. Uh, I was going to be on the podcaster patio. So it, there was just, it was all nerves and excitement and so much prepping. So let's talk about Woolen Folk. Um, I'm gonna put some footage in here of, of the day as I'm talking. I, I, I'm stuttering because <laughs> I'm stuttering because I really don't know how to describe that day. It was, in terms of my making life, my knitting making journey, it was probably one of the best days I've ever had. Um, it was, I, I was supposed to get up to Woolen Folk, so let's start at the beginning. So, got up that morning, <laughs> uh, got myself ready, pulled out my sweaters, got myself all organized, and made my big cup of tea, got in the car. Actually, I drove the kids to school that morning, um, came home and did all of those things, got ready and everything, and then drove up to Kingston to Hutton Brickyards. That is where Woolen Folk took place. It is an incredibly beautiful very unique space um it almost looks like part of it is is home to like an abandoned um warehouse or factory but it's really interesting it's a beautifully interesting piece that kind of sits in the property and it's right on the river 
right on the Hudson River, and it's absolutely breathtaking. It's wide, this beautiful wide open space. If you saw um, any footage from last year, I'll, I'll link to that video down below. You can get a really good sense of what the space looked like. Uh, it was completely different this year, um, but I got there. So the drive up is about two hours from here and kids are in school, bag is packed, car is packed, and I head up. I have my audiobook going, which I can't wait to tell you about, but again, that's another episode. Um, so I have my audiobook going. I, I downloaded a brand new audiobook for the day, for that whole weekend, and I just enjoyed the ride. I, I was not going to lie. I was really nervous because I was going to be spending about two hours in the booth with Woolens and Nosh, with Michelle, who is the dyer, and just talking about the yarn, selling the yarn, um, and just hanging out with her. It was also going to be the first time that we met. We've done so many Zoom meetings and FaceTimes together and talked, I can't even, I don't even know how many times in creating the colorway, but it was the first time we were going to meet. And we've seen each other and all of that, but um, face to face for that, that, that full contact hug and everything, and we were so looking forward to it. And... Oh my gosh. I have to say I was a bundle of nerves. I really was. Not so much meeting her, but just about the whole day because it was time in her booth. It was going to be full-fledged back in the fray of the fiber world of the fiber, fiber festivals. I'm stuttering over that word. Um, it was going to be a lot. It was really going to be a full weekend and I hadn't been to a full-fledged fair uh, in two years, not since 2019. Um, so, and again, even though I did Woolen Folk last year, it was on such a smaller scale than it was this year that I, I refer to it as the perfect re-entry festival. So, um, got there about 1130 and wow, <laughs> oh my goodness. I think my tip off should have been the fact that there was a line. The event opened at 1230, I believe, 12 or 1230, and there was a line out into the town of Kingston just to get on to the fairgrounds. Wow. So I, I patiently waited. I'm in my car. I, you know, have knitting, will patiently wait. So I was knitting away in the car, you know, creeping along, creeping along. And um, I got there. I couldn't figure out where to park. <laughs> Parked my car way, way, way away from what felt at the time like I was way away from all the other cars. And it was perfect. It was perfect. I was next to this little um, U-Haul rental truck. So I felt like I was kind of hidden and it was it was perfect because I knew I would need, you know, a couple of breaks during the day just to kind of rest and recharge my battery. So I uh, parked the car, gathered all my bags and started walking. And wow, the line of people to get in, um, people started recognizing me right away. And it was just, it was so wonderful and exciting um to be talking to people again to be to be seeing subscribers and followers and just friends again it was really really wonderful so i made my way down into um into the event space and the first two people that i see are <laughs> i get there and the first two people i see are kevin and ray who are needles at the ready and i was going to be doing the podcast or patio sharing the patio with them they were going to be my co-hosts so there were three groups for the patio and I'll talk about that in a bit but um Kevin Ray and I were partnered for one of those patio sessions so I see them there and they're there with a couple of other people and it was where do we go what do we do oh my god what's happening so, so we, we all just kind of took deep breaths and it's also my first time meeting them which was amazing also so it was hugs all around and oh my gosh and I'm finally seeing you in person and let's hug again and you pull back and you look at each other and you hug again uh, and that was wonderful Kevin and Ray are such amazing people they are so funny um I f they felt like my big brothers for the day which was really really lovely um so we we sort of kind of got the gist of where we were going and what we were doing um so I, I went over to Michelle's booth and there she was. There was Michelle. And I gave her this big, big hug. And I just kind of wanted to stay in that hug. I, I really didn't want to let go. Um, it was it was just so 
amazing to finally see her in person and look her in the eye and smile and laugh. And it was just, it was wonderful. It was just one of those priceless moments, meeting a friend and meeting someone that you've worked with. So you're now meeting for the first time. I can't describe it, but it was just amazing. So, you know, we're hugging, we're, we're talking, we're excited, we're squealing, <laughs> all of the good things. And, and then I turn and there's the yarn. Wow. Um, it was, she had it set up in these two amazingly beautiful baskets on this table. And I, all of the patterns were laid out. I, I brought my foot, that foot came with me. Um, so that sample was put there. She was working on a sample, the Muscle Burrow, I think I'm saying that right. The Muscle Burrow hat by Isolde, um, or Isold. So she's working on that. So that was the sock sample, the hat sample. And I happen to be working on a mitten sample. Of course, I don't have that in front of me, but I'll put a picture in for you. And um, or maybe I'll pause in a minute and go grab it. So I'm working on this mitten sample. And it was really funny that it was a mitten sample that I was working on for the whole day, considering socks are my thing. Um, but we really wanted to showcase the yarn in other garments rather than just socks. I think people get very caught up in hearing the term sock yarn and thinking that's the only thing they can do with it. And we really wanted to show that there was so much you could do with it. Um, you could, we whatever, whatever your medium, whatever your muse is, you could crochet with it, whatever, make garments with it. So we really wanted to show that off. And we were getting ourselves sorted we had bottles of water. Um, Michelle was so prepared. It was just incredible. I mean, she's old hand at this, so she knew, she knew exactly what to do. Um, I felt like I was completely new, and which I was. <laughs> I mean, I have visited so many booths at so many festivals, but to be on the other end, to be on the sort of the selling end of things was completely different. And I mean, you're on from the the minute the, the gun is fired, so to speak, or the bell rings, um, you are on and you are ready. And the waves started coming. People started coming. And I think one of the best parts of the day for me was seeing, meeting so many people that have bought my patterns have followed along with me on Instagram, who've taken my class on YouTube and learned to knit socks with me. And that was the, I heard that so many times over the weekend and it never got old. It never got old. It was never like, oh, we're okay. We're seeing this again. It was never, ever, ever that. And it will never be old for me. The, the outpouring of love and gratitude to have someone that was patient enough to teach them how to knit socks. I mean, so many people said to me, you taught me how to knit socks. And I really, I really, I would put my hand to my chest because it really meant so much to me. And I remember when my kids were little, especially my daughter, um, whenever you gave her a kiss, she would like take the kiss from her cheek or from her forehead or wherever you kissed her, she would take the cheek, the kiss and put it to her heart. Like she was just storing them all there. And it was one of the most endearing things she ever did as a child. And she still does it on occasion now that she's a little older, but I felt like I was doing that with every compliment, with every interaction, with every moment of sharing. I felt like I was taking those moments and, and putting them in my heart because it just, it makes what I do so worth it. And I, I love it so much. Um, I just, I really, really love it. And I loved meeting so many people and they, they were wearing their socks and it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible to see something that you've taken so much time to create. Um, and it is still a humble sock pattern. It's not a sweater. It's not, I'm not comparing it to a sweater, but just the time and the care that I put into these patterns and to see people wearing socks from that pattern um especially the newest one the one more step socks um just it just it got me it got me right here and i i can't at the risk of just gushing and gushing and gushing i just can't express how um 
just how amazing that was. So to everyone that stopped by the booth, to stop by the Woolens and Nosh booth, that said hello, that, <clears throat> excuse me, bought some of the yarn, um, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. And and there were some people that were like, oh, okay, I made it. I got my skate. <laughs> uh, they, and you know, I finally got to meet you and they were so excited. So that excitement was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. So thank you to everybody that stopped by. Um, just thank you. I'm so full of gratitude. It was amazing. So uh, after my two hours, um, I decided it was time for just a little respite. Um, I needed to take a few minutes to, I don't want to say stop smiling, but <laughs> to stop smiling, to just kind of take a breath, uh, get something to eat. Um, cause I'd been in the booth since from, oh my gosh, from about 12 until two 30 or so. So, um, I, there were vent, there were food vendors. It was, there were so many people selling food. There was a bar, there was a um, vendor for drinks, for snacks, for all kinds of things. But I just wanted that quiet time. So I had packed my own lunch. Uh, it was in the car. So I just sat in my car, took my sweater off. It was a little hot. <laughs> um, I took my sweater off and just kind of relaxed for a little bit. And, and that recharge was just wonderful. I really, really needed that recharge um so yeah that's that was what I did and then it was time <laughs> it was well it was time but but not quite yet so um I had a little time between moments in the in the day I had time between being in the booth and being on the patio and I just took a lap around to see all of the vendors. Um, and there were so many familiar faces, so many friends, so many people, you know, but, but it was also really, really crowded. Um, and I don't know whether it was just, even though it was outside, it, it did feel a little bit much, like a little overwhelming. Um, and I also tried really hard, <laughs> really, really hard not to buy a lot while I was there. Um, I have so much yarn. I've been sort of rearranging my stash and it was just, wow, I have a lot of stuff. So I was trying to behave and um, not spend so much. So it, it was kind of a pretty quick lap around and uh, I went back to the booth. I went back and hung out at Woolens and Nosh some more. Um, it, it was just a cozy, safe space and I stayed in it and I was there for a little bit longer. Um, met up with Kevin and Ray again saw some other people. Uh, my friend Carolyn Bloom, she was working in a booth just two over from me, actually, uh, at, with marinated yarns. And I'll talk about, well, you know, what? I'll, I'll show you what I got there later. And um, so I stopped by there for a couple minutes and then kind of kept going and ended back up in the booth. And uh, I got some yarn. So while my yarn was selling, I bought some yarn that I really want to share with you. So if you haven't tried Michelle's Targi base, which is what my yarn base is. It's really an incredible, incredible yarn to knit with. Um, it's sort of a cross between a fingering and a sport. It's like right in between. So it's a little bit heavier. You can still use, you know, fingering weight needles, whatever size I use 2.25 on that, on that yarn. Um, I just love it. And she had two colorways, um, that were knit up and it's really interesting when you see the yarn in the skein versus knit up how different it looks so this is one that I bought oh, isn't that beautiful it's so beautiful and this is called pretty felt am I holding this right yes pretty felt garland am I saying it right <laughs> pretty felt garland so that is this and it is just the happiest most festive color uh I think I'm actually going to save this for for Christmas. Um, not sure if it's actually going to be socks. Maybe it will be a cowl. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but it was so, so beautiful. So this is a new colorway that Michelle has right now. So I got that. And because it's fall, because I love fall and I couldn't resist, I bought Deep Fall. <laughs> this is Deep Fall. Oh my gosh, there it is. Am I showing you? Yes, Deep Fall. Look at those colors. Oh my gosh. And this knit up, 
was just so spectacular. Um, I had to have it. I had to have it. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So this is what I picked up uh, while I was selling yarn, <laughs> hanging out in the booth. This is what I grabbed. Um, absolutely loved it. What else? Um, then all of a sudden it was time to be on. I, I stopped by, it actually I had a little time. So I went up and met or not met, but I walked up and watched, um, the grocery girls, Gigi from Gigi made it and Adela, um, who is, um, Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on her yarn right now? I'll put her yarn in. in oh my God, this is horrible. Um, <laughs> uh, Lola Bean. Oh my God, what was what was wrong with me? Lola Bean Yarn Company. Uh, she's the dyer. So they were all, the four of them were doing, um, I think, did they do the first? Yeah, they did the first patio. And the first patio didn't actually start until, I think, 3.45. So... Um, they were at the patio and it was so wonderful to see them. And, and it's funny, let me backtrack for a second. Um, just before getting out of my car and everything, I'm telling the day a little out of sequence, but just before, just after I came back into the onto the fairgrounds from a break, I suddenly turned and there was Jody and Tracy. And it was the first time I had also met them in person. Um, and it was like, oh, hey. And they're like, where are we supposed to be? We're running a little bit late. And I was like, oh, calm down. You guys are fine. Just, you know, take a minute. Hi, so nice to meet you. And, you know, more hugs, more like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't wait to actually have a minute to talk to you. Um, but it was so amazing seeing them. And I just have to share a story because the very first time I saw the grocery girls, I saw Jody and Tracy was a five years ago at Needles Up. And Needles Up was an event, another fiber event that was hosted by Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, they stopped by, and this was in the town of Rhinebeck where the first Needles Up was. Um, and it was sort of, I, I can't, I don't even remember exactly or know how to explain it, but there was an area right across from sort of the hall where Needles Up was being held. It was this field right across, like a lawn in front of a house. And they were standing, Jody and Tracy were standing on that lawn talking to someone. And they were a pretty good distance away. And I remember pausing and taking a picture. And I was so fangirling and like starstruck. And I wanted, I started to walk over and then I paused. And then I was like, okay, maybe if I, maybe if I kind of inch my way over and hover and, and then I was like, no, I can't, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't talk to them. I can't because it's Jody and Tracy. It's the grocery girls. No way. And fast forward five years to a week ago. And now they're like, Hey, you know, we're so excited to do the patio with you and you know, how we're doing, where are we supposed to be? And, you know, and all of a sudden it was, wait a second. I, I suddenly felt like we're, we're at the end of the day, everyone, we are all knitters and i realized yes fangirling over or fan guy whatever whoever you are excited to meet we all on the on the other side of things feel like come up and say hello don't be shy or don't be nervous because it's i was so terrified to talk to them thinking that i wasn't dare I say good enough? I, I don't know what the right word is, but I was just like, I can't talk to them because of who they are. And, and I felt like I got that. I sensed that in people as they approached me on Friday and Saturday. And I kept, they were like, oh, I'm so sorry to bother you. I, I just want to say hello. I'm like, come on in, say hello. And I think what I'm trying to say is we're all knitters at the end of the day. And Earlier today, today is, it's Saturday the 22nd, I was watching the live, um, Kevin and Ray were doing a live broadcast of their Rhinebeck recap on YouTube, and I was watching it, and, um, you know, there's that same sense that we're all, they said it as well, we're all knitters at the end of the day. We're all, our common thread is our love of making, our love of fiber, our love of um, yarn and knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, whatever that is, that's the, that's the binding tie between all of us. And no one is 
greater I'm trying to use my choose my words carefully. No one is here versus here. No one's here versus here. We're all here. We're all on the same level. And it is okay. It's more than okay to go up and just say hello to someone. Just hi, Denise. I've I've been watching your podcast. I'm so excited to meet you. And I am so happy to meet people. I really, really am. And just like Jody and Tracy are, I feel like Jody and Tracy still are their fan base is a little larger. Um, so they do have to guard themselves a little bit more and and their boundaries have to be a little clearer um, just because they can truly be overwhelmed. Um, but being overwhelmed is relative. So what is what is overwhelming to them can be just within my circle and my following can be really overwhelming to me. I feel like I'm rambling, but at the end of the day, please don't hesitate to ever come and say hello. That's what I'm trying to say. We, fiber is the equalizer. We're, we all love it. We all use it. We all want to share our love and excitement for it. So please just come and say hi, talk to me, share your story, show me your socks. I love it. I love all of it. And I'm so grateful to everybody that spoke to me um, and shared their stories with me on, on Friday. So Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so now, now it's time. <laughs> so the other group that was speaking was um, the Knitters League, and I think there are four in their group. So they were the second ones up, and they were amazing. And you're like, oh my God, we're so nervous. One of them didn't even want to go on. <laughs> um, but we're like, no, just go ahead. Just take a deep breath and go for it. So they were wonderful. And then when they were done, they kind of, it was that, oh, okay, this really isn't a big deal. You, you've totally got it. And I feel like... Where the pa- where I thought the patio was going to be, um, I'll see if I can find a picture. When you look at the main st- the main space, the way it was set up last year, uh, there was there's a stage there, and this year there were musicians there on that space in that space pretty much for the whole day. I thought the patio was going to be there, and it felt that felt a little bit more intimidating to be sitting sort of higher up than everybody and you're looking out and everybody's looking at you and it felt a little like um that felt a little bit scary but where the patio was where the patio actually was um was sort of just behind or like up up and behind the fairgrounds a little bit or behind where all the vendors were and it was sort of just off a path and in front of us were, were these like wonderfully sloping hills um, and people were just camped out, just sitting on the grass. Some were in chairs, some were on blankets um, and they're knitting or spinning and just kind of hanging out. And it was so casual. It had that campfire feel to it. Like we were all, sorry, a little earthquaking there. Um, it had like a campfire feel to it, you know, um, just without the fire. <laughs> but it was very, it was casual and comfortable. And, you know, I, I looked at Kevin and, and Ray and the three of us were like, oh, okay, can we do this? Are you ready? Are you, what are we going to, how should we start? What do we say? And I said, you know what? Let's just start with a lot of honesty. Let's just say we're scared to death and go from there. <laughs> and I honest, they were like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And, um, it's funny. They just, we, they decided to bookend me. So, um, Ray was on my left. Kevin was on my right. And, uh, it we started with that. We were like, hey, everybody, you know, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We are so nervous. We've never done this before. I mean, talking to your camera is one thing like I'm doing right now. It's I can pause, rewind, edit out, do whatever I want to do. But to do it in front of a group felt really scary. It was the first time I had done it. And honestly, we had such a great time. We had such a great time. It was so it felt intimate and comfortable and you know we talked for a little bit and then we opened it up to everyone for a Q&A and the questions we were getting were so great like really great and uh it was just fun and we were laughing and it was just we really really had a great time and there was a little banter between the three of us and I was so grateful because we had talked um I reached out to them after having like a session meeting with um Felicia and Catherine, who are the coordinators of Wool and Folk. And we, once we were all paired together, I sent the guys a message and said, would you love, would you mind, or would you be interested in meeting via a Zoom just for us to sort of get to know each other a little bit 
off camera, so, like before everybody's looking at us. And they were like, oh my God, that's such a great idea. So, so we, um, I set up a Zoom and we chatted and it was, we, we talked for like two hours. It was wonderful. Just, just being ourselves. And why do you, why do you podcast? What, what, what is your motivation? Why are you doing it? Um, what do you love to knit? It was, what's your favorite color? It kind of felt like a date, but not really. <laughs> uh, it was just us getting to know each other and it was so nice. So once we were now in front of people, we had like a little rapport amongst ourselves. Um, and it was great. It was really, really great. It was so nice. Um, I, I've just, it was great. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, people are so kind. And, and toward the end, there was a make, a knitter, Rachel, who is a graduate student. Um, and Rachel had left a comment, I believe on a podcast episode, I was talking about my daughter's interest in um, marine biology and veterinary medicine, etc. And she left a comment and sent me some links to different websites. And, you know, you might want to share this with her. And I think this might be right up her alley. And it was, it was so thoughtful of her to take the time to do that. And, um, so this person now comes up to me and says, hi, I'm Rachel. And I said, nice to meet you, Rachel. You know, thanks so much for coming. And she says, do you remember, do you remember the person who shared, um, I'm the graduate student who shared the, the, you know, the, the marine biology info. And I said, I was like, oh my God, that was you. Wow. And it was, it was one of those moments that's so priceless because we had that connection and to now meet her in person and just to see the kindness in her face and, and her excitement in meeting me and mine in meeting her, it was just, those are the moments that these festivals are all about. It really is about community and, and Kevin, Ray and I talked about that a lot that we try really, really hard with our podcast to answer as many questions as we can to reply to comments, even if it's just a simple thank you for whatever someone has, has left in the comments, um, trying to answer questions. Um, I get a lot of technical questions, so I do try relating to my classes. So I do try very hard to answer those questions. Um, but it's, it's building that community, the needles at the ready community, the Earth Jones Girl community, the Grocery Girls community, the Lola Bean community, Gigi made it. But to have all of that come together, ultimately those are little subsets, but we're all part of the same big community. And there is room at the table for everyone. I say this all the time. There is no need for competition. There is no need to one up somebody. There's no need to, well, I can't do that because she's doing that. Or I, I should do it this way because he's doing it that way. No, you do it your way. You do it your way. Um, I'm so grateful to Mars who taught me that very, very valuable lesson. So even though someone else may be teaching the same style sock that I am, they're teaching it their way. I'm teaching it my way. And that's okay. There's space on the YouTube, on the web for both methods. And just to be yourself, be comfortable in your journey, be comfortable in what you are sharing. And the response, when you are genuine, the response is then running into people like Rachel. And it was just such a priceless moment. Rachel, if you're watching, thank you so much for stopping by to say hello. Um, thank you for the picture that you took of us. So we are supposed to get... Um, I'm going to share that picture here. Um, we are supposed to get recorded or copies of the recording because the, the patios, each session was recorded. So we're really, fingers crossed, we're hoping to get that. We don't have a time frame. Um, we haven't really done a recap post the event. So uh, we're waiting for that. Uh, but we are supposed to get recordings of the patio that we can then upload to our own channel. So hopefully that will be coming. Um soon and I will put that up for you all to enjoy. I can't wait to see it. So uh, I'm sure I'm going to be like, Ooh, oh, cringe, cringe. <laughs> but um, I think I we really had a good time. So you know what? If I ummed and odd and, you know, flubbed a little bit. And it's funny because I remember at one point 
the time of the day we our our event was at uh our patio was at one four forty five and it was right at sunset like the sun's just starting to come down and it was at one point it was right in our faces and I had to take my sweater off because I was so hot um and I'm going to talk about my sweater in a second I had to take my sweater off because I was absolutely I was schwitzing at that point <laughs> and I, I'm holding my hand up to, against you know trying to block the sun and because I, I, I really couldn't see anyone which was good and bad um I think at first that kind of helped ease the tension that I couldn't see anyone uh but just putting my hand up and then the sun hit that perfect low and all of a sudden it was oh my gosh okay it was instantly cooler we were it, I could instantly see people it was so much more comfortable so um yeah I have no idea what that video is going to look like but I am so excited to see it and and hopefully share it here with you on the channel so um that pretty much sums up woolen folk oh my gosh and I got some really I don't usually share I don't always like sharing um acquisitions but I'm just I loved I got this set uh, I hope you can see it I know there's a little bit of a glare but this is the autumn 2022 mini set by dragon horde yarn yeah, maybe if you if I turn it you can see oh and you can also see that let's, let's just cover that <laughs> we don't have to see how much money I spent uh so here is the um those are the colors and each color has a name uh, and I'm sure as I'm knitting these, I will share them with you. But I didn't even realize that Dragon Horde Yarn, Tristan, hello, if you're watching, you are so sweet and so uniquely you. And I just, I love you so much. So she, um, I bought these two sets. And this is the Autumn Court Minis. So I got these two sets. And she very generously gifted me this other set because it is a they're hobbit minis because i am a hobbit at heart <laughs> so thank you so much for that um i also got these little uh pins not pins but like little um tags for your making so i could attach this to a sweater let me pop one out so you could see it um hold on there we go okay, i can't get it open hang on <laughs> Here it is. Oh, so how do I open it? Hang on. Oh my gosh. You know what? Oh, got it. Okay. So it's like a little, oh, this is so cool. It's like a little button. So you push it through your making and then sort of button it into place just like that. So how cool is this oh my gosh i want more of these i bought two for myself and one for a friend um it says knit witch so i know that friend is going to know who she is as soon as she sees it i will mail this to you soon uh and yeah i love this i love these how cool is that i definitely need some more of these so i bought these from tristan again thank you so much um and what else did i get uh let me show you I don't think I brought the books up here. But anyway, yeah. And this I picked up from Marinated Yarn. And this is, it, this is a very hard color to film because this is not doing it justice. It has a purpley look here, but it's not. The name of the colorway is Charlotte. And this is on her Playtime DK base, DK weight base. And it's, oh my goodness, if, I don't know, if gray and purple had a baby it would be this color so it, it does have a slightly purplish tone but it's much much darker than this I think it's just the light here is making it look a lot purplier than it really is um yeah it's it's much it's darker it's just this rich dark gray and it almost looks brown in some light so this is amazing and I bought this to make Carolyn Bloom has a new cowl out called training day um and I want to make it in this colorway with a cream color so I, I thought I was going to do it in the solid that's why I bought the two but I want to do it in two color it is a two color cowl that then has her embroidery then she has instructions to embroider over it it is exquisite and i want to do it in the two colors so i've ordered the colors the uh cream color from marion so um when that gets here then i'll get started on that so 
Oh my gosh. Wow. 40 minutes of just one day. <laughs> I'm going to pause and then we'll talk about Rhinebeck. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So it's now Saturday and Saturday morning was much more chill. Didn't have to worry about dropping the kids off. Um, the fairgrounds opened at 10. So it's about an hour and a half ride up for me. So Kingston was two hours up and Rhinebeck was an hour and a half up. So I got up nice and early packed my lunch once again, uh, my snacks, made my tea, put on my my Rhinebeck Day sweater, had my cowl on. I will put a picture of that in here for you. And got in the car, popped in the audiobook, and started driving. So beautiful ride up. This, If you get a chance to be in New England during the fall, um, and I, I've always been told that New York is part of New England, but others may beg to differ with me, but the point is the color driving north is just so spectacular and and the footage that i'm putting in didn't it doesn't even do it justice it's so amazing to actually see it as you're driving it's just it's all the golds and reds and browns it's just so beautiful and at that time of the morning there's not a lot of traffic so i'm just cruising it was amazing and it's really funny it was foggy that morning so there is the veterans memorial bridge that you go over just as you're entering it's a little further north of here just as you're entering um i don't know if it's duchess county yet it's like just before duchess county but the fog was pretty much covering the top of the bridge so you couldn't even see left or right and it was just beautiful so quiet so beautiful so the ride up was amazing I ordered my ticket the night before, and this is the first time I've gone to Rhinebeck alone. Uh, I usually either meet someone when I get there or drive up with someone, and this year I went by myself. Um, I usually go with Carolyn Bloom, or uh, who's Bloom Handmade Studio, or my friend Ellen, who's knit by a lefty. And this year, everybody was kind of scattered and doing their own thing, and I know Carolyn had worked the entire day before and even the day before that and setting up Marion's booth. So I knew she was a little spent and didn't wasn't up for the drive or maybe or even company for that matter. So she needed to reset and rest a little bit. Um, so I, I like I said, I went up on my own and it was nice. It was so quiet. Um, Friday had been a lot wonderful, but a lot. And I enjoyed the ride up. I really did. I got to the fairgrounds about quarter to 10. It had already been open for 45. No, did it open at nine? It opened at nine? Maybe nine or I don't remember. But anyway, um, doesn't matter. The point is I got there about 9.45. Um, the rush had already gone in. So I just kind of walked in. <laughs> it was wonderful. I went through security. They checked my bag. And... I, I, you know, got my ticket scanned and I just started kind of walking in and I took it all in. And that was what was so wonderful about it. I, the feel, it was a crisp, perfect fall morning. My sweater was cozy. My cowl was cozy. I kind of pulled it up a little. Um, I had my bag, you know, my backpack and my bag and, uh, I was just walking. I was just walking and taking my time. And it was the sights. It was the smells. It was so familiar. It, it oh, It's going to sound so corny, but it really felt like returning home. I've been going to Rhinebeck for 20 years now. And um, it has changed so much over that time. I mean, it was the New York Sheep and Wool Festival 20 years ago. And now it's just Rhinebeck. It, it's become this mecca for people and it, it it's some per, I heard Gigi refer to it as the Super Bowl um, of of the making world of our fiber world it's the Super Bowl it's the Academy Awards it's the Grammys like all of the events rolled into one for us <laughs> it really is and it was wonderful and and I got 
to experience those first few moments alone and it was nice and I cherish that so much. I, I will remember that for a very long time. Just where you walk in is not the main entrance, which is on the other side of the fairgrounds, but I came in sort of a like a side entrance and it's where the barn is. So it's it there's multiple ways in. Um, so it does feel like a main entrance, but it's, it's sort of behind everything and on a side. So it does have like that main entrance, side entrance feel. And I'm walking up the hill and there are vendors along the path on the sides. Um, and the smells and the trees, it, it, it was returning home. It really was. And I kind of had a plan. I wanted to get to the Madeline, to the Matter Root Main booth. So I, I had my brochure and I'm, you know, looking through it to figure out what barn they were in. And if you've never been to Rhinebeck, it's laid out. It is basically the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. So like the state fair is held there, all of that stuff. So, I mean, fairgrounds are fairgrounds. Um, and there are barns that are in rows. Then there's another set of buildings, like what I call the ABC building. So it's A, B, C, and D. And I think there's even an E building, which has, there are a lot of vendors in there. There are classes that are held there. You can take a workshop or a class up at Rhinebeck. Um, and then there are food vendors. So I went past all of that and I, was, I started to feel myself like, oh, I want to go in. <laughs> Feeling like that pull to go in and start exploring. But I was like, no, 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 no. Stay focused. Stay focused. And... I wanted to get to Matter Root Main because there were two bags that I really wanted. And I was hoping they would have the two designs available and they did. So I went right to that barn and there was already a line outside. Like, so when you walk into the barn, most of the vendors are along the sides and like maybe some down the center, depending on the size of the barn. So she was down on the right side, just a few stalls in and the line was already past like the first two stalls. So she had a good line going already. And, but what you do, you, I walked in, like kind of nudged my way in, got what I wanted. And then I made my way to the end of the line and just patiently waited, happily waited with everyone. Um, and I got, let me show you. I've wanted this particular motif. I have so many bags by Matter Root Maine, by Christina. Christina, if you're watching, your bags are perfection. Um, they're simple, simple design, beautiful design. They hold a ton of stuff. I've actually, in their mini, their trundle bags. So in the mini trundle, I've had two sock set socks going at the same time. Um, I have so many of them. But this is the really the design that I wanted. I have their B design. Anyway, okay, rambling. So here it is. This is the mini trundle bag so it's got a boxed bottom and this is the design so it kind of sits like that it's not really going to sit right now because it's empty but it's the perfect sock size or small project size if you're knitting a socks mittens even a small cowl could comfortably fit in here if you're not bringing like all the yarn with you depending on what you're making but i really wanted these um the moon phases this is really what i wanted super simple and i also wanted one of her dark bags so it doesn't get so dirty because <laughs> kids traveling so, events sporting events different things i'm always moving 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 so what i love is the bag can roll down just like this and it then becomes like a little bucket and sits perfectly so it does that and when I'm done and I'm ready to go I will just roll it down and I cinch it and there we go and it's perfect and when I'm ready to knit what I also love about it is I can knit on the go so the bag just pops open no, she is not paying me to sell these. <laughs> she does not know that I'm gushing about these bags. I just love them so much. I, I'm literally looking at one, two, three, four of them in front of me, aside from what I just bought. So yeah, I have a lot of them. <laughs> and, they, and they're all full of projects. Maybe that's, maybe I need to knit more so I stop buying. Anyway, doesn't matter. No, no shaming here. So 
here. So, and it sits right here and I can just pull my knitting out and knit and it stays right on my arm. This is how I knit or my favorite thing to do. I'm always, I'm a backpack kind of person, keeps me balanced. I will hook it onto the strap of my bag, clip it right on and I can just keep knitting. I pull the yarn out and I can just keep going. That is what I love. Zipper bags. I love a zipper bag, but sometimes the yarn snags in the zipper zipping it up this i can just roll down i love these bags so much so here is my moon phases mini trundle did i need a big version of that yes yes i did no don't say anything i did i needed it no i really didn't did i want it yes it's not about need it's about want <laughs> and i bought a giant this is the big trundle and it comes with a strap this is it this bag is, oh my gosh, look at those phases, you guys. Look at this. <sighs> yes. Do you understand now? I had to have it. Yes, I did. And I use them. I use these to travel with. Um, not that I travel very often, but if I'm going, if I've got a day event with the kids or we're just out and about for a day trip or we're on vacation, it's the perfect bag. I can just sling this over myself it folds down and I've got everything in here it is so comfortable it's light straps are adjustable it's right here the adjusting the the little thing is here they're adjustable love these bags and they're perfect for sweater projects I just yes I had to have it so here it is so I've got my two got my two bags so happy I love them so much and while I was there, the woman that was standing in front of me on the line <laughs> was wearing a, I don't usually buy a lot of sweatshirts, t-shirts, although I am wearing one that I will share with you in a minute because this again was a must have. Um, she was wearing a hooded, a lightweight hooded zipper, uh, like a hoodie, just like a, a lightweight hoodie. And... Here it is, super, super simple. There's the hood, but this is on the back. And yes, I really wanted it. It has pockets and it was kind of an impulse buy, but I don't regret it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. And I live in things like this at this time of the year. It was just perfect because I do experience personal summers. We won't talk about that in detail. For those of you who know, you know. And so I, can, I can't even wear most of the sweaters and things that I knit. So I need lightweight stuff, uh, short sleeves. I need to be comfortable. So this was perfect. And I actually have this on a bag. Let me see. I think it's this one right here. Hold on. Yep. Or maybe it's a different. So what is this one? Yeah, so there's the sheep. And then I have this one. This was the first bag the first matter root bag uh, mini trundle that i bought and as you can see from <laughs> how frayed it is here look at that this has been well used and well loved and it's already starting to kind of pull apart here um i'm hoping i might be able to fix it or maybe i'll just lay it to rest because i have others <laughs> but yeah this was the first one that i ever bought and i love it um there it is. It's just, it's the perfect bag. They really are perfect. So that is my love of Matter Root Main. So that's what I got there. <clears throat> um, so anyway, got my stuff, paid for everything, and I was happy. I was content. The rest of the day was going to be icing after that. And it's it's interesting. I wasn't, there was, I, I, I wanted to run to meet up with two very special people that day. So once I was done at the booth, I texted them and I said, I'm here, are you guys here yet? And they're like, we're here, we're in the horticulture barn. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm coming, I'm on my way. <laughs> so I was like, don't move, I'm running, I'm running. And thank goodness for texting and for phones because we probably never would have seen each other just in moving around. It's amazing how big the fairgrounds are but yet small at the same time um and how easy it is to not see people how easy it is to miss people just by 
in for by minutes you can miss someone you could even be walking down the same path um and i'll put a picture in here of just what like almost like a, a view of of the paths look like and um you could be walking on that path and literally just pass somebody without even knowing you're either looking this way at someone's sweater or looking that way and they're looking the other way and you just don't see people and it's it's I will admit I wanted a low-key day I really did I just wanted to be a knitter that day and browse around and spend some time with friends and just laugh and reconnect and it um it was Sue and Chelsea of Legacy Fiber Arts and we spent the day together and I haven't seen them in over two years because the last time I saw them I saw Sue the last time I saw Sue in person was February I think it was February of 2020 and the last time I saw Chelsea was that previous October was 2019 um, at Needles Up and at Rhinebeck so it had been a long time and I was so I missed my friends I really did and I found them in the barn and the reunion was just I'll show you it's right here. I was going to go the I was going to cross my That's what friendship looks like. That's what not seeing your friends for a long time looks like. And you know I'm a squealer. You know I'm a crier. You know I get excited. Um, if I love you, I'm going to love you really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to smother you, um, which didn't always serve me back in my boyfriend days, but <laughs> that's another story. Uh, but it's, I I was so happy to see them um, and be with them again. It, it, it's really that simple. Um, I don't know how to explain it. We just wanted to be with each other and we spent the day together, the entire day together. Uh, we went to the hill, we, we had lunch. We shopped a little bit, um, we had lunch, we walked together, we laughed together. Uh, they were there with um, Sue's son, Chelsea's brother's girlfriend, Christine, so we, she was there and I kept thanking her for welcoming me and making me feel so comfortable to join them and and also apologizing because I didn't want to feel I didn't want her to feel like I was monopolizing Sue and Chelsea although I kind of was a little bit so Christina thank you so much <laughs> um I was like you're going home with them I'm not going to see them again for a while so it was just so wonderful and then it was time to get to the hill and um we got to the hill and the hill is the meetup spot. It's where if you are a podcaster, if you are a designer, whatever you are, you say we're going to set up a meetup on that hill, excuse me, at a certain time and that's where you meet. And um, we all got there. I think it was about two o'clock that we got there. And a, again, more coming home. It was more returning home. And seeing people I haven't seen in so long and hugs and kisses and moments of just, oh my gosh, I just looking at each other face to face. And it was just so fantastic. And the trees, I know I'm saying everything at once, but it was, it was, again, it was that perfect fall vibe. The, the trees, everything was just cooperating with the, with the moment. Everything was just spectacular. The temperature, Everybody was comfortable in their sweaters. The trees were perfection. Everyone just looked amazing. And my head, I felt like my head was on a swivel <clears throat> with how beautiful sweaters were. And so let's talk about that for one second. Let me digress. I was working on my sweater. I said in my last episode that I wanted to pull out my white sweater and finish it to wear. I tried, y'all. I was knitting like a bandit. I, I, my needles were smoking. I was knitting on this thing so much. I managed to get the bottom, the full body of the sweater done, and I just had the sleeves to go. And I'm going to talk about this sweater in detail in a separate episode because um, there's a lot to talk about with about it and, or to share about it. 
And I decided for the first time, I have been knitting for a long time, since 1999. And it's the first time I've ever done sleeves two at a time. Why? Why did I never do them that way before? Why didn't anyone ever suggest that? Why did I ever think of that before? I, I don't know. I have done socks two at a time on and off for years, years and years and years. Never thought to do sleeves two at a time. So I slapped those babies on the needles two at a time and I was going. And I think it's the only reason I even got as close to finishing as I did because all I had to do was bind off the bottom and finish the sleeves and the neckline and I would have been done. If I had stayed up that night, the night before and worked on it, cause I was knitting on the mitten during Woolen Folk. If I had been knitting on that sweater um, during on and off during the day and then knit on it at night when I got home and just pushed through and didn't go to sleep, I could have finished it. But I said, you know what? I've got other sweaters. I'm going to bed. I need to rest. I was so tired at that point. So I will finish it. I desperately want to finish it. And between that rekindling of having a sweater in my hands again and there was a rekindling in having the sweater in my hands again and seeing so many beautiful sweaters in person. It's one thing to see them on Instagram or to see them on YouTube. Um, it's another thing altogether to see them in person and to see the yarn. And and this is a, a, a running joke. I think this joke will go on as long as Rhinebeck goes on that Rhinebeck and fiber festivals in general are the one place where you can touch someone <laughs> you could touch a random stranger without permission and you won't get into trouble <laughs> and it really is true i had so many people just you know i feel a hand kind of like on my back or touch an arm and i would just kind of turn around because i know there's nothing threatening in it it's all there's so much you can feel a lot in intention and and when i was in massage school we learned a lot about intention through touch and intention and to be touched at these fairs, you the intention is just awe and wonder and what are you wearing? Um, it's like, again, watching the Oscars and everybody, the, the women are mainly asked like, oh, and who are you wearing tonight? And who did their jewels and who did your dress? And you're like Vera Wang and, you know, Swarovski or whatever it is. <laughs> so um, Gucci, whoever did your jewels, did your dress. And it's so funny because the joke was on Friday, I didn't remember who knit. I didn't remember the, the name of my sweater, the yarn that I used. I knit, that was my first Rhinebeck sweater. First sweater I ever made. It was done in pieces. Um, I remember staying up late that night and I went up with my mom and sister, my parents and my sister 20 plus years ago and I pulled it out. It's a classic. I loved it. I wanted to be cozy and comfortable. Didn't remember the name of it. So people were like, what? And as they, they were like, oh, and I, I knew what they were. I was like, I'm sorry. I don't know the name of the sweater. I don't know the yarn. They're like, are you serious? <laughs> it, was, it was just like, I couldn't have, have, have annoyed people more. Um, so it's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But I did dig when I got home. I dug and dug and dug. Finally figured it out. Um, couldn't find my pattern notes. Couldn't find anything. But I knew it was a Vogue sweater. I knew that. So long story short, I did find it. And um, all the information right now is on my Instagram feed if you're there. And I will add it to the show notes down below. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, we're on the hill and it's it's looking at all of these sweaters. So between making my sweater and seeing all these sweaters, my love... I forgot how much I love sweater knitting. How much I love making garments like that bigger pieces and I I started ripping out I'd started a weekender oh my god I don't even know how many years ago now and started pulling it out because I sort of fell out of love with it so I'm I'm ripping out my weekender and I literally the, the whole body was done I had gotten up to the sleeves and I'm like nope nope it's not gonna work so I now have to finish my white sweater I have yarn from the weekender sweater to make a sweater and I have two more sweater quantities worth of yarn actually three more sweater quantities quantities just waiting in the wings and i'm so excited so will i be talking about sweaters a lot more on the channel going forward yes have i forgotten my love of socks absolutely not 
there's just going to be more, just more to share, more to share. So looking forward to it. So it didn't buy very much. Um, I got my Matter Root main stuff. I found this other new to me dyer. This is Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. And I bought this. I mean, holy cow, guys. Look at its color. It's perfect. It, these are my colors. It's colorful, muted, muted colorful. I don't like bright colors. That just doesn't, it's just not me. I prefer subtle and muted. And I found this. I was in one of the barns and we, Chelsea, Sue, Christina, and I sort of separated for a little bit. Um, they were looking at something. I was looking at something, or maybe this was before I ran into them. Anyway, I don't remember, but found this and this dyer, again, it's Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farms. She, almost all of her colorways are based on books and movies. And this was her Lord of the Rings inspired colorway. And this colorway is Frodo Baggins. So that is the label. Can you all see that? And this is Frodo Baggins, and it's on her squishy DK base. So this is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 245 yards. Oh, I am I am in love with this colorway. And I think I know it's going to be a cowl. I know that. Um, that's the other thing that I really want to make. I don't know what happened also between the reawakening of my sweater love and there's also been a reawakening of cowl cowl passion like i just want to make big squishy things for around my neck and shoulders um so this is definitely going to be a cowl that i want to make sooner rather than later um and in the week since rhinebeck and woolen folk i've pulled out an old cowl that i was working on um there's just <sighs> It was just such an inspiring weekend. Um, so back to the hill, we're on the hill and you know, it's pictures and hugs and all of that fun stuff. And it's so interesting. It blows my mind looking at people's recap pictures and videos in the days after the event. I did not go up on Sunday. So it's Rhinebeck is Friday, it's Saturday and Sunday. Woolen Folk was only Friday. I did not go back up on Sunday. Uh, my daughter and I had some high school things we had to do and, um, other family things to do so and you know what and I, I the last two years well 2018 and 2019 I had gone up on Sunday and always ended up kicking myself like why did I do this because I was so tired and like you know my cheeks <clears throat> excuse me hurt from smiling and it's always better to like uh what's the word to, to know to know when it's time to leave and usually that would have been the end of the day Saturday uh, and going up on Sunday was always a little too much so I'm I'm glad I didn't go up on Sunday however that said what I started to say before is it's amazing how many people I didn't see how many people I missed and wanted to see Yes, I, I, I was very tunnel vision with Chu and Chelsea, but I, I really genuinely didn't see a lot of people, but they were all there. And again, it lends itself to or or explains how big the fairgrounds can be and can feel at times. And then other times it can feel very intimate and small. So um, I'm sorry to, to those that I really did want to see. I'm so sorry that I missed so many of you. And to those that I did see, it was just amazing. Again, the grocery girls were there again. Um, who else did I see? Oh my goodness. I saw Tristan. I saw uh, of Dragon Horde Yarns, Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, there were just so many. Yeah, of course, I'm blanking on, on, on names and everything. I'll, I'll put more pictures of people and try to tag as many as I can. Um, it was a really great day. It was a really great day. And uh, I also picked up some books. Chelsea and I went into, um, I think it was Barn E, where it's like book alley, as I call it. Um, so other people are sell selling books and magazines and stuff, but there's this one area where the majority of the books are sold and authors are there in this space. Um, so you kind of go down one side, come up the other side, and then you pay at the head of the aisle. And uh, there are a lot of books being sold there and authors signing their books there. So you get to meet the authors. Um and uh, I'll put a picture in here of the books that I bought. 
And um, I really love the yoga book. I bought a yoga book and really want to get into that. I, I, I really want, I feel so deeply that I'm not going to use the phrase knitting is the new yoga. I'm not going to use that phrase, but there is a Zen about knitting and I want to explore that a little bit more. And this book seemed really, I didn't plan to buy the book at all. It's just, it kind of popped out at me and the author was standing there and um, the other two books, seasonal knitting and slow knitting. Um, I, I, I want to embrace that a little bit more. And I feel that pull to do that. Um, doesn't have to be a rush. You know, I say that all the time in my classes. You, there's there's no need to rush. Just take your time. And Mars, who is Hay Brownberry, she is such a huge advocate. I mean, she's really standing there on her soapbox with her picket sign daily talking about just enjoy the journey. It's, it's that slow knitting. It's really okay to take your time with the project. With me, I do have a threshold. Like I can get bored with a project after a while if it's been on the needles too long. Um... But sometimes putting it down and coming back to it sort of like reawakens the excitement of knitting it. So it's it's kind of a fine line and, and it's different for every person. But there's a couple of themes I really want to, that my interest was sparked in and rekindled and so much I want to share here on the channel with you. And I really want to talk about the sweaters some more. But um, yeah, it was it was a really, really great weekend. And I'm sure I'm forgetting some things that I want to share and I'll, I'll talk about them maybe more in another episode. Um, just, it was a great, great weekend. And thank you to everyone that, that came up and said hello to Sue and Chelsea. You all are in my heart. I love you both so, so much. You are family. You're not just, it's members of the fiber community, fiber friends, Friends in real life, and then friends that start to feel like family, that you treat like family, that you see as family. And I feel like that's been the progression with my relationship with them. Um, and I'm just grateful for it. So, so grateful for it. And I know I'm well on the road to other friendships like that. Um, and it's just, it was just great. It was a great weekend. Thank you, Michelle, Kevin, Ray, Sue, Chelsea, uh, Carolyn, for, you know, talking. I, I've missed you. Um, I miss spending the weekend or, and chatting with you. Um, I'm so proud of everything that you're doing with your business and your making. I, it's, I'm, I'm cheering you on. I'm cheering everybody on with what they are excited about and what they're venturing to do. Um, it's all about community, everybody. And I love this making community and I'm so proud to be a part of it. So thank you all so much. Um, it's amazing. It was just amazing. So one little tiny tad bit of admin and then I'm gone. So I'll be back in one sec. So just a little bit of admin really quick. And I also haven't talked about this t-shirt, so I will in a second. Um, little admin, the flying, the falling leaves sock cal, falling leaves sock cal is still ongoing. Um, we are a little over a month into it. It will end on November 15th and I will be announcing winners this weekend, it's now Saturday, the 22nd. So tomorrow, the 23rd, I will be live on Instagram for a little while, maybe a half hour or so. And I will announce the names of the winners. Um, I'm going to be picking four winners tomorrow. Yay! And I'm so excited about that. I wanted to do two um, each month, but I have so many prizes and I just, I'm just feeling the love and just want to share it. So it's going to be two winners for September to September 15th to October 1st, and then two more winners from October 1st to October 15th. And then there will be two more then um, as we get a little closer to the end, and then one big grand prize winner that I will be picking. Uh, and then I'm also going to be doing a really big giveaway. Um, I'd like to do one here on the channel as well as on Instagram. So just stay tuned for all of that. There's gonna be lots of giveaways, giveaways, giveaways. Um, I also have a an advent calendar. <laughs> I know I'm a little early. I know I'm a little early for the holiday season, but I do have an advent calendar, a holiday countdown calendar um, that I will be giving away. And that came from Purple Yarn Co. from Gail. So um, I'm going to give that away in time for 
the winner to start opening for December 1st. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, this is the longest episode I have done in a really long time. <laughs> Thank you for staying with me for so long. There's just been a lot to talk about um, and I didn't even cover half of it with all the other stuff, but I will be back soon. Um, famous last words, but I will try my best. And uh, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're enjoying the fall season. And really quick, this t-shirt perfectly sums up Rhinebeck as well as the weekend itself. And let me see if I can capture it here for you. Happiness is on the hill at Rhinebeck with warm cider donuts and bags and bags of yarn. Couldn't be more true. <laughs> the vendor of this is We Ones, um, was the vendor. I'll try to link to her down below. I walked into the barn to get books and this t-shirt was hanging outside. So her, her barn had like a, almost like a draping around it like a horseshoe this was hanging just on the outside so as soon as you entered the barn you saw this um and it was a dark version of the shirt long sleeve and i thought oh my god yes i have to have that this is one of the best things i've ever bought at a festival and it perfectly sums it all up um so thank you so much for having this t-shirt for making this available um could not be more perfect thank you to everybody for watching today and sticking with me. Um, new subscribers, welcome. Old people that have been here with me for a while, um, thank you for being here. Sending everybody so much love and happy fall vibes. Bye everybody. I will see you all again really soon. Bye everyone.